When you're starting out with a new website on a brand new domain, it can be really demotivating not to see hardly any traffic on your website for the first many months. And that's just how it is. But in this video, I have some tips for you that will help you speed up this process so you can see results sooner. But let's start by setting our expectations right, because I'd like to show you exactly how fast you should see results. This is a website I started around a year ago, where I put around 50 articles on the site for the first month. And after four months, I added another batch of 50 articles. I just want you to see how fast it typically goes, so you have the right frame for this. Here's the graph of the website I just told you about, and we're just looking at the organic traffic from Google, which means the search traffic from Google. We're not counting Pinterest traffic or Facebook traffic or whatever. Not that I do any Facebook traffic, but I did build a Pinterest profile for this website because it made a lot of sense. So as you can see here, it took one, two, three, four to five months before I saw 5,000 page views organically for this website. Around month number five, it was up to close to 10,000 page views. Let's take a look at another website. This website only had like 40 articles and I also wrote all these 40 articles within the first one and a half month. And I should say that the starting point for these curves is the day that I posted the first article. So for this website, it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, around eight months before I saw 5,000 page views. During the eighth month, it was around 6,000 page views organically. And let's finish off with this website. It's not even eight months old, it's seven months old this month. I start new websites all the time. One, two, three, four, five, six months in, I was around 5,000 page views per month. And then of course it started quickly to take off. For this website here, my content team has put out content every month and a lot of it. It was around 100 articles over the first month and 50 articles over the next month and so on. I'm showing you these graphs just to give you a rough example of how quickly websites typically get traffic with Google. And I did no link building over these months because it would just look unnatural as I'm going to tell you more about in this video. But now you have a good general idea about how fast you should expect traffic on a brand new domain. By getting other websites to link to your content during the first couple of months, you can sometimes speed up things here, but I would not recommend that. More often than not, these first initial links that you place manually by asking people to do so will do more harm than good. A brand new website will not get links naturally over the first couple of months, simply because nobody is finding the content yet. Unless you do a great job of doing outreach and marketing for the website and getting a ton of traffic from other sources than Google, let's say Pinterest or Twitter or something like that. In that case, you can start building some links, but I would be very cautious with link building so early on. In fact, I almost don't do any link building to any of my websites anymore. Not the big ones, not the new ones. If you've been following my channel for a while, you also know that I tend to write on topics that hasn't been written on before. So the competition is low and I can rank for these topics without links. So now that we have gotten this whole link building thing out of the way, let's get started with the first tips. The first tip I have for you is actually to write on topics that nobody has written before. For the first 15 to 20 articles on your brand new website, I would go for teeny tiny topics like this. Even though they will never bring a ton of traffic to your site, they are very instrumental in order to get that first initial traffic because nobody else has written these topics before. So you will definitely shoot to number one in Google much, much faster. When you do this and you find these golden opportunities, it's just awesome because you will show Google that you belong at the number one spot. And you do that by crafting a really, really good article, a long in-depth article for something that people haven't written anything about before. The next tip I have for you is to go into Google Search Console and tell them every time you publish a new article on your new website. For the first handful of articles, this is crucial. Google has had a lot of glitches inside the Google Search Console where articles are falling in and out of the search result. As soon as your website is three to four months old, you don't need to do this anymore. Let me show you here on my screen how I submit these articles in Google Search Console. And I'll also quickly show you how to check if the articles are in fact in the Google index. 
You tell Google that this content exists now and that you want them to index it by going to your profile here in Google Search Console, putting in the link here and press enter. And after you did this, click this request indexing button. And this will take around 10 seconds. There it is. Got it. So if you want to check if the article is already in Google's index, go into the article and just copy paste part of the first sentence here or the headline or whatever, and go into Google and type site colon animalhow.com space, and then put it like this. Just search for this specific sentence here and you'll see it's indexed here all right. As I said, this is only something you need to do when the website and the domain is brand new. After the website is seeing some traction in Google, and let's say you're getting five to 10,000 page views per month, you don't need to do this anymore. Now Google will do a great job of finding your content as soon as you write it and put it out there. The next tip I have for you is to go hard after the Google featured snippets for your searches. It's just a lot easier to rank number zero, you know, above all the search results with that snippet, than to rank number three, four or five. You do this by crafting a better and more precise answer than the other guys out there. And maybe there's not even a featured snippet at all, then you just have to go for it. When we're going for the featured snippet, we want to write a short, concise and formal answer that will grab Google's attention and simply be the best short answer to what people are asking about. And it's also important to write this snippet in the right format. Sometimes it will be a little sentence, Otherwise, it'll be a structured list or a bulleted list. You just need to see what the other guys are ranking for in the snippet. If you want to take over the snippet, you need to look for a snippet that's not right on point, where you can do a better and more precise answer. And in order to win this snippet, you can also look at similar searches for more competitive keywords. Let me show you on my screen how I do this and how you can do this too. Let's say you wanted to take over the snippet here. For the search, do tennis players make a lot of money? As you see here, this one is definitely not on point. It's ranking with an article about how do professional tennis players make a living? So that's not the same thing. And also here in the answer box, online athletes in four major sports, blah, blah, blah. So in general, how much do professional tennis players make? So it's definitely not getting straight to the point. So when we want to research how to do this better, we can do a similar search. Now I tried to type in, do baseball players make a lot of money? Of course, this search will be much more competitive. So we don't want to write this article and be up against crone.com. We would never have a chance with a new website, but we can get inspired here because the searches are so similar and we can see sort of what Google liked with this article and how they won the snippet. How much money do baseball players make? So that's much closer. So just do something like this and of course change the numbers and the content to be relevant to tennis players. Maybe something along the lines, the average salary of a tennis player is around blah blah blah. And maybe dig into some problems with these numbers, uncertainties. And like this one here, at the most recent count, 38 players are making around whatever and 125 players are pulling in more than 10 million. Just get inspired here and write something like this. Maybe do three or four more similar searches in order to see how to totally nail this sucker. When going for this featured snippet, I have another very important point to make here. Make sure to answer the whole question. Give them everything there is to this answer. But in order to get them to click to your website, you need to craft an enticing title that shows people that you have something more for them. So let's say you got this snippet with a bulleted list. Typically Google will put five, six or seven points in this list and the eighth, ninth, tenth and so on, the next points will be cut off the list. So in order to get those clicks to your website, you need to make a title something like nine best ways to or 11 best tips for, because now Google will only pull the first five, six or seven of those tips and people will know they have to click your title and read your article in order to get the full story. The next tip I have for you might seem super obvious, but trust me, there's some real gold here. Just hear me out. It's about writing exactly what people are searching for in order to match that search intent and just nail it. 
show them at the very beginning of the article that you have exactly what they are looking for. When I'm onboarding new writers for my team of writers, many times I have to teach them this because this is not something that comes natural to a writer. Many times we will start our articles by coming at the subject from an angle and then through the article we will start building some momentum and at the very bottom of the article we will give the full answer. So we do this to keep people on the page and keep them interested in the article. But actually it's much better to offer the full and just short concise answer at the top of the blog post. Even though some people might bounce off the page right after getting that answer, Google will know that these people found exactly what they came for because they're not going to go back to the search result page and click on the next answer there. So by putting the most important part at the beginning of the article, people will trust that you know what you're talking about and that you have the answer they are seeking and they are more likely actually to read the whole thing. And before you start writing anything, I want you to always check the competition in Google. Go into Google and search for the topic you want to write on and check what's on top there. If your website is new, you just registered the domain and you're putting those first articles up there, don't write an article if you find the correct answer in one of the articles that already ranks in Google. The next tip I have for you is to get relevant eyeballs on your first articles. And that's a good reason why I say relevant here. I don't want you to ask all your friends and your family to go and check out all your articles about quilting if they are not into quilting at all. Because what will happen here is that you will get a lot of visitors to your site all right, but they might bounce off quickly because they have no interest in this topic. And Google can see from the user behavior they have on your website that this is not good quality content because it's not a good match with the audience you're showing it to. So instead I want you to find the people that are interested in what you have to write. Go into Facebook groups or look into forums or maybe go on Quora and ask some of the questions that are closely related to what you're writing about. It's just really important to show Google with the very first visitors to your site that your content is killer content that people love, they want to stick around, they want to click through to that next article, they're not bouncing off because they have no interest whatsoever in what you're writing about. So even though it can be very tempting to show all your friends your new website, maybe you shouldn't do so. Just wait a little while and try to find the right places where people are looking for what you have to share. Write the best possible content for these first articles and invite people over who have an interest in what you have to share. This is to show Google that you have excellent metrics, that people want to stick around and they love what you're doing. Subscribe to my channel here. I'm putting out new videos every week for you guys and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. See you next time.